<laughs> Take 14. Well, hello and welcome to another episode of the Micro Four Thirds Curmudgeons. I'm Stan Foxworthy and this is Larry Monteith. And uh, we're happy to be here. What's the matter with your eyebrows? Oh, you like those? Well, you know, the funny thing is, is ever since I showed Sharon, uh, Three Blind Men and an Elephant Productions, uh, Hugh Brownstone, his YouTube channel, and she watched his amazing production values and the way he came across, and she says, honey, she says, you need eyebrows. That's what you're missing. And I said, well, I can't grow them, so uh, gaff tape to the rescue. And, uh, you know, so that's, that's why this. It looks ridiculous. Well, I look ridiculous. All right. Eyebrows coming off. Well, Hugh, we tried. Anyway, and a big thank you to Hugh and Claudia. Uh, a while back, I got the first run of his new book, uh, uh, the both of them, The uh, Streets of New York. Absolutely fantastic, especially now that we're made to stay down here in South Carolina. If we wanted to get up to North or up to New York to photograph, we have to be in quarantine for 14 days before we can actually go into the city. But anyway, thank you for the book. It's amazing and very, very much appreciated. Well, so there's more rumors about Olympus these days. You know, people are getting way too caught up in all of this. Oh my goodness, the sky is falling, the sky is falling. You know, it's funny, It's it was brought out to be transparent because of FCC and other regulations that they were entertaining somebody to, to, to buy the imaging division. But it hasn't even gone through yet. And when it does, it'll probably be the end of the year. In the meantime, I don't really even care. I am an Olympus educator for North America, I, so I... I'm kind of part of the fold. I'm, I don't have a salary or anything else. It's, it's a very wonderful position that I love to have. It's more honorary, but I get to teach and I get to, to use the gear and actually all the gear I've, I purchase all this because I'm a commercial photographer and I use this for my own work. Uh, I don't worry about it. It just doesn't matter. So, you know, one of the points that I would make about the future of Micro Four Thirds is, and this is actually one of the things that's unique to Micro Four Thirds, is that we actually have two major manufacturers that are supporting yes. Micro Four Thirds. I mean, actually, there's more manufacturers, third parties that are making accessories and lenses, but in terms of camera manufacturers, we've got two. Mm -hmm. And we have two complete lens lines from Panasonic, Olympus. The lenses are fabulous. There's third-party lenses. We didn't have the uh, Sigma out today. Yeah. But um, a tremendous lens line. So even in a worst-case scenario, um, we're really set for many years right now with what is already out. There's all sorts of cool stuff coming out. They've just come out with a uh, firmware software upgrade so that you can go ahead and use the uh, Olympus cameras for uh, your webcam. So that is coming out. Um, and Pan Panasonic has that capability also, though I believe still only for Windows platform. Yes, yes, and I, and I believe it's going to start out with on the Olympus side for Windows platform as well. So if you've got a Mac, you've got to wait. Uh, I personally, for the stuff I've helped other clients with, I'm using a Live Gamer Pro type little cube that I can plug in through the HDMI and use that as a webcam and it works beautifully. So I don't, I'm not really too worried one way or the other. Yeah, uh, it's kind of a non-issue, yeah, that doesn't but it's cool. That, me that much. Well, but they're still innovating. Here's the thing, a company that was thinking of just shutting down or getting out of things wouldn't keep innovating. They wouldn't keep producing new things and new firmware updates and stuff like that. I mean, you know, we've 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 got uh, we've got that 150 to 400 that will be coming out at some point. Uh, something that I'm told that uh, we're supposed to have uh, some more deep learning AI for the uh, EM1X for all you birders out there. It's going to have. Uh, <laughs> bird autofocus. So you, right now we've got motorsports, we've got trains, and we've got aircraft 
they're going to be adding yet another one which is for birding so that'll be later this year as well i'm told probably sometime around christmas time winter time at least but again these are things that are being worked on and continued out of a company that everybody keeps saying is dead i just don't see it i see this as as living on and i'm going to be using my gear for years no matter what so again at the end of the day i'm not worried there's no other gear i'd rather use uh it, it fits it works i don't have to I don't have to worry about cleaning my own sensors anymore. That's, that's something that is well worth it. So, I'm speechless. Hey, write this down. <laughs> Doesn't happen very often. Uh, no, and, and you know, we're, we're going to be doing uh, a number more projects. Originally, we thought we were going to be able to do the four thirds curmudgeons once a week. It's not, it hasn't happened. The first uh, nine weeks of the year, we were absolutely going gangbusters. We didn't have enough time to uh, much less change our minds as anything else. And then all of a sudden, uh, after the 7th of March, COVID-19 hit, things got shut down. We wound up going into paddle mode, dog paddling mode. Uh, we've got a number of projects we're doing that'll be coming out here in the near future, probably around uh, August, September, we're, we're doing a number of comparisons. We went ahead and we're going to compare the old to the new, the OM-1, the original, right here, to the EM-5 Mark III. I mean, this was what it was kind of designed on. So if we, if we tip it down here, I mean, you can see even the design of this and where the power switch is, this is designed to look like the old film crank. So what we're going to do is we're going to be doing a comparison. I'm going to be shooting a roll of color, uh, Ektar, and a roll of black and white, probably some T-Max. And we're going to go ahead and put that up against the EM5 Mark III, uh, shooting both monochrome in camera as well as uh, raw files. Uh, I've got a little 51.8 on here. Uh, Larry's got the 25 1.8 on there, the premium lens. And these guys should match up pretty good. I kind of have a feeling how it's all going to work out anyway. But it's going to be fun to try. Fun to have some, some enjoyment with this. So there's, I guess our message for today is stay tuned. There will be more announcements coming yeah. out. And, um, but uh, even in the absolutely positively worst case scenario, which I do not anticipate the worst case scenario, but even in the worst case scenario, there's still plenty of support for Micro Four Thirds. Um, and um, uh, I, I, I think it still is a um, extremely uh, compelling format, uh, particularly for uh, the advanced amateur. I, I, I think the EM5 Mark III is, should be their bread and butter camera. It was a little bit late to the market, but it's here, and I've, I've uh, worked with it a little bit. Stan was worked with it a little bit. Um, just an absolutely delightful, uh, what I call walkabout camera, where you can just take that, a couple prime lenses, uh, go, go for a walk, uh, and, and not feel weighed down by equipment. Right, right. It, it definitely feels amazing. And that's also one of the things I love on their, their EM series, EM1, EM5, EM10, uh, is... I don't know if you noticed, this, but there's dual dials. A lot of cameras, when you get into the mid-range, is a single dial camera, and you have to hold down a function button or whatever to make it do something else, whether it's compensation or changing the shutter speed instead of an aperture, if you're in manual mode, anything else like that. Of course, if you're wanting to talk about buttons and dials. Well, yes. But uh, again, as you're talking about, <laughs> it's, it's a great camera. It feels awesome in the hands. It's, it's tiny, it's compact. It's a, it's a lot lighter than a G9. <laughs> I mean, yes, we all love the viewfinder in the G9. It's, it's absolutely amazing. Uh, but this works just beautifully. So, what do you want to take us out with? Put me on the spot. 
That's why I need the eyebrows so, so I can raise so them here. So we're um, so this can be edited. Um, I can come up with some EM5 pictures to come out with, but we don't. We're not going to have. If we want this to drop tomorrow, we're not going to have um, our side by side EM5. No, no, no. We're we're not. Um, what do we want to go out with? We should go out with some photos. We haven't talked about this. Ah, <sighs> this is true. Well, we've, gosh, it, it's funny. We've we've had a little bit of commercial work. The funny thing is, since we've been more or less had stay-at-home orders and things like that, I mean, I don't know what. Uh, you know, we'll have to dig out some things. I was able to uh, squeeze out and do take the EM1X and run up to Carolina Motorsports Park uh, about a month and a half ago and, and do a little bit of photography. Uh, SCCA was doing a time trials up there and they allowed me to come up. Of course, I had to wear my mask and we had to be social distance and stuff. But uh, yeah, it's been tough. I mean, I haven't had, there hasn't been any racing. Racing has been just shut down. Uh, the MotoGP and World Superbike seasons have been truncated, I guess it's called, anyway. So, you know, hopefully we'll have uh, have some images you can we can add in this. I can add a few portraits. Uh, we've been doing that and a couple of uh, other commercial shoots. So again, stay stay tuned for further developments, and we will uh, we will let you know as as we find things out. Yeah, you'll be the the next person to know. Thanks again for tuning in. Hope you guys all have a wonderful, healthy, and safe uh, month of July. Take care now. Uh, hold me in noise. This will work that part in. Uh -huh.